if real estate negotiation is like college football, then being president is like going into the Super Bowl. It's a big challenge. He likes to think big, he likes to play big, and he's gonna be able to do that because he's gonna deal with Congress, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, you name it. And political negotiation is a little bit different than business negotiation. It's less transactional, it's more relationship. It's more long-term relationship. It's more like a marriage. And in marriage, if you keep on asking who's winning this marriage, your marriage is in serious difficulty. You know, Susie, I, I'm not sure what the digression on computers really brought to the party here, but what I certainly walk away from in that quote was the idea that Mr. Trump likes to make his uh, counterparty uh, feel that there is competition, that there are others out there who want that particular deal. Can he do that when he's dealing one-on-one -on -one with the leader of another country? Well, you go right to the exact right point, Tyler, because really what happened in his business negotiations was they weren't as transparent as what he's going to face when he starts negotiating with people in government. A lot more is going to be known. He can't make up that there's other competitors. He can't bluff anymore. That having been said, he is a lot uh, bigger hammer. I mean, he used to be able to sort of threaten with lawsuits or threaten with... Um, with the fact that there was somebody else out there who wanted the deal. And now more is going to be known, but he's got the, you know, the United States' power behind him. I mean, the one thing I take away from that quote um, is that how much he just loves negotiating. And uh, there's a whole cottage industry of people who debate whether or not he was really good at it, as good as, as he says. But he loves it, and so I think we're going to see a lot of it. Well, negotiation, it's true that there's real power in having what we call good BATNA, which is the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. And in this case, by creating competition, you're creating alternatives for yourself. So that works. I think in politics, or particularly in international diplomacy, like he's going to face, it's harder to walk away. You can't walk away from Russia. You can't walk away from China. Uh, so it's going to be a little more complicated. And this is why I'm saying it's, he's, he's going to have to up his game as a negotiator and really face a lot of tough negotiation challenges. He's going to have to follow his own advice about, you know, learning. You know, that learning is so important in negotiation. He's going to have a steep learning curve. Some, some people, Susie, would hear that last quote. I've had my own people come up to me and say, oh, Mr. Trump, you shouldn't tell them there are other people. Some <laughs> would see that as an artful bluff. Others would see yeah. that as he's making it up and lying. Is there yeah. distinguished between the two in the art of the negotiation? Well, look, I think the bluffing is going to have to stop because too, there's going to be too much information, too many people who know the facts. You can bluff when you're alone with another business person or your teams are alone in a room and that nobody has complete information. It's going to be very difficult to bluff in an international diplomacy kind of situation. But that having been said, as I said before, he has bigger weaponry behind him this time, uh, literally and figuratively. And so I think that kind of uh, blowhardiness is going to have to have to come to an end. It uh, some people may perceive Mr. Trump in his negotiations to be a bully, and they may punch him in the nose. Uh, what's going to happen then? Well, I think it starts to get really dangerous because uh, these people, like these countries, are playing with nuclear weapons. And, uh, and one of his quotes is, you know, I like to protect the downside. And the downside here is really serious. I mean, if you go head to head with the Russians or the Chinese or, you know, in the Persian Gulf, uh, we need someone who's cool. He's going to have to be smart. You know, in some ways, we can be our own worst enemy. Uh, as the old saying goes, when angry, you will make the best speech you'll ever regret.